Hello and welcome to uh, an impromptu live stream. Not to throw this on you, but if you haven't noticed, Gen Con is happening. It just kicked off, I think, today, uh, unless you were early to check out vendor halls or whatever. Um, and Privateer was nice enough to send me a preview box of the Kadoran Winter Core. And, um, and that arrived today, so I was very antsy and I want to put it together and I want to get it painted, but then it occurred to me that, well, it might make sense to actually just do an unboxing and show everybody what you get in that box. So that's what I'm doing here. Uh, I don't expect it to be terribly long of a live stream. I just want to again show you what all you're getting in the box. One of the big concerns for people has been, and hello everyone, <laughs> hope you're having a great Thursday. <laughs> One of the big concerns that people have mentioned is, oh, what are these 3D prints going to be like? So. This came in a little box, like this little box that just arrived on my doorstep today. If you actually paid retail and bought it, I'm sure you get a much prettier box. Um, but other than taking it out of that box, I haven't opened these yet, so we're just going to learn together <clears throat> what they look like. And for reference, I mean, I got the Orgoth model pri before, and it didn't dawn on me any which way, just prepped it and painted the model like normal, and then it's like, oh, it's a 3D print. So now knowing that, we'll see if it looks any different, I guess. But um, so that's kind of it's kind of what this is about tonight. So yes, Kador Christmas. I'm very excited. Uh, I don't know if you guys heard about the, the new Primecast that came out. I haven't actually had a chance to finish listening to it, but I did hear Matt Wilson say that the, uh, the, war, the new War Room app is in fact going to let you print cards. So thank you guys <laughs> on behalf of me and all the older gamers who prefer paper, including, by the way, like I even printed out this from the beta cards today just so I can have a piece of paper to reference for Captain Ekaterina Baranova, the dire wolf, and the great bear. So we'll go over all that. But we can start right in and check out what these beautiful, beautiful models look like. So first off, they just look like uh, bubble wrap, yeah. Uh, decent weight to them. Uh, I mean, if you were to get resin, you know, it feels like a resin weight, not like a metal weight. Uh, we'll start with the lightest one. Let's start with Ekaterina. Ekaterina. She is one of the um, Greylord models and um, apparently rose quite highly in the ranks of Kador during the Greylord Covenant era before it got disbanded and then remade into the Winter Core. So what have we got here? Make sure I've got this in frame for you all. So here is the first, so there's four pieces in a base total. Let's get you in there. I don't know why I keep wanting to adjust. I'm going to lock this focus because I know how this camera, web cameras hate miniatures. So, I'm just gonna sit there and lock it and then I can just move it. All right guys, so there you go. Sorry if it's kind of awkward. I, let's take this one step at a time here. Overall, I mean, do you guys see any mold lines? I think I see a fingerprint. <laughs> I don't even know how that's possible. <laughs> Maybe from cleaning or something. Because apparently the process, you know, there might be some uh, sh um, supports and stuff that get cleaned off. But, I mean, there you go. There's the sheen. And you can kind of glean some from there. It's true, cameras hate miniature focus. Right, Paul? Thank you. So hyped to be playing War Machine again. Oh, me too. Here's hoping that in MK4, this butcher will still be kicking in MK4. Why? Why does everybody love the butcher so, so unearned? That boy has had such unearned accolades. Anyway, yeah, so focusing on this, we've got her little, um, you know, her steam pack, the thing that channels her arcane energy into being able to lift all her super heavy armor. And then for her face, you know, she's a decent size model, clearly. Like, Definitely embracing the larger, larger base size, which is one of the benefits to doing the whole resin or plastics in general. Uh, and then she's got some weapons. Obviously, here's her other leg. Uh, and we've got this little plug here. Everything should just be push fit, which admittedly will mean not so much in the um, customization category. But yeah, so she'll does she just fit in there. Let's see, into there, 
Don't worry, you don't have to magnetize her leg. All right, looking good so far. She's uh, definitely very well armored there. And just help me keep track if anything's looking out of focus. I have it pretty close up, so there you go. Why do you hate the butcher? His novel was gold. His novel was just him being a, a not very smart bully. Like, why did his, why did dear Lola die? Remember why dear Lola died? He, he couldn't not. And there's her weapons as well. So how does this all come together? I don't know. We'll have to see. Maybe, we, maybe we'll have some time to, to pluck in some assembly in those little, Oh, there's just some little contact points there. Bright side plastic or resin and all of that really doesn't weigh much of anything. So there you go. She can kind of hold her little arm there. Am I doing that right? Okay, yeah, that's that holds in there clean. <clears throat> and then on this arm, that should be, you know, focusing stabbiness at you. So arm like that. And then that should also hold right there. Which I think will be pretty clean, right? Some peeps have easy mode, AKA butcher. See also Vlad, oh yeah, Vlad is. Yeah, but Vlad doesn't survive into the new, into the new edition. Just noticed you've hit 34K. Oh yes, I know. Thank you, Paul. Trying to uh, grow this, that channel again. Let's see, does it feel like the resin is cured properly to bendy? Well, I don't want to try to bend it necessarily, but that's me giving kind of light pressure. Like I'm not trying to break it, but I'm letting it bend if it will bend. So there you go. That's, that's about your bendiness. And on the sword, like there's some give here, which is helpful because obviously if the piece dropped, it should have some resilience to that. But I mean, if, I don't know, if it drops from a high distance, I'm sure there will be some bits that get broken. But hey, that's what we have glue for, right? So, so far so good. But yes, feel free to ask any questions on that. Of course, our tra traditional Warhammer bait or War Machine base with no arcs anymore. Man, I had a whole system for that too. So yes, that is Ekaterina. And uh, she is a focus seven caster uh, who can rack, who has three spells of her own and can rack another three spells. Uh, just reading about that before we started. So yes, there you go. That is that so far. That's, it sure does. So you're still getting your, your slot of base and the round, the telltale rounded edges as well as you do. I haven't, played, I haven't played in years. Please tell me sources around. They put her in a big chonky suit. I'm, you know, it is what it is. Uh, but yeah, there's three versions of Sorsha and it's unclear. Like she doesn't die in the hinge hold scrolls. So presumably she's still around. I think given the fact that this takes place like six years after, after 612 AR, um, like when the hinge hold scrolls and everything happened, uh, it is likely we are gonna see a whole lot of new characters. I like the big chunky suit. It's fine, it just didn't seem like her character. She was like speedy and stealthy and all that, and then they really slowed her down in a speed four steam suit. So, you know, it's fine. Hey Robert, how you doing, man? Let's see, Sorsha is aging a lot like the rest of us. She'll be like 45. Uh, oh gosh, that's right. How about the base? Yes, look with that, imagine. Let's see, it looks like what I was imagining when they said they'll be printing their own models. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's fine. I don't know if you know, or if you either own a resin printer or know someone with one, but yeah, this is, this is about what I expected. Like, I don't see any print lines. Now we haven't gotten to the jacks or anything, so we'll see what that looks like. And you've got all this like, Fluffy, fuzzy detail up well, here. Good detail. The little holes in her exhaust fins are very clear. That's true. Yeah, That's so you can even see like the little, as Thomas is pointing out, eh, I can get it up there. The little holes on the exhaust are very distinct and clear. So, <gasps> hooray. 
that detail is clean AF. That's right, Christopher Miller. Appreciate you. I like the novels they did for Thagrosh and Makeda along with the Godless novel. I haven't read a lot of the Horde stuff. I read like so much of the War Machine side of those books. But yes, I am looking forward to some more literature coming out on that. Let's see, bummed I'm not at Gen Con. Oh, really? Oh, I'm sorry, you're missing it this year, Robert. Let's see, would love to come back to the game, but no longer a community for it here. You know, it was an interesting thing I, I listened to today, the 2D Plus Tough, I think was the channel. And he does like wargaming news and he was talking about the new 40, uh, the new Mark IV. Gosh, the letter four is just not in my head today. And one of the things that he said he got backlash when he was starting to talk about War Machine again is people saying, oh, the community's dead, nobody plays anymore, so there's no point in talking about it. And he's like, well, if you don't want a community to be dead, maybe you should start talking about it. If you want a game to live, maybe you should start playing it. I was like, huh, touche, Skip. <laughs> Did you say it's be the change you want to see? Be the change you want to see. Be, a representation, be representative of the things you care about. Yes. And that's how, that's how we got such a big ol' infinity meta here. Anyway, that's, that's enough of Katarina. She looks lovely. She looks like she, you know, two weapons in, in here. She's got, you know, s taking a little note from Final Fantasy here. There's a gun with a blade on it. And then her, her axe, because she is, after all, a Greylord model, or maybe former Greylord model. We've got to remember everything's an army now. It's not all just faction, Kador X. It's the Winter Core. And I guess the Greylord Covenant has been, is no more. Let's see, she was fun to play with, being able to use her speed and freeze spells. Oh no, Sorja was a blast to play with. Let's see, do you think character Warjack will be better in Mark IV? Miss playing my Black Ivan. Man, I can't get over how much love for Black Ivan there is. He's great. I was always a fan of Beast 09 myself, um, but, I should hope that there are character jacks that, that make a comeback. I think that was a really cool element to the game because then they would just have their own unique abilities. Their characters, you can only bring one of them. And then they're usually built on some chassis, right? So the kit can allow a configuration for that without it being um, super special. Or, or I guess they could sell upgrade pieces, which they did with like Torch. Let's see. Uh, look at Dinger. He just plays with his wife and loves the, loves the community. Fair enough. Uh, they definitely did a good job cleaning up after the supports, which I'm not. I'm guessing is maybe like a manual job. So um, I know before I had to go, the part of the live, the prime cast I did listen to, Matt Wilson was mentioning that the labor cost involved in dealing with the 3D printed models includes cleaning them up and and all of that. So we are going to get to this one here. So I wish this game was still good. They made a mistake by overpushing theme forces, and I believe damage is done. I don't think this will put it out of the death spiral it's in. You know, that's kind of another whole thing too. People like, there's so much um, negativity, I guess, regarding the state of the game. And the other thing that uh, that guy two, two plus, two up tough mentioned, which I super appreciated, because he's like, I started my channel What's that around? Is there a slot on the back? Where you can Actually, yes. It? Yes, there is. Okay. So if you want a slot, you can get a slot. Okay. He mentioned he started his channel when Age of Sigmar came out. And I don't know if you remember the wailing and gnashing of teeth that happened when that game came out, but it was like a crap show. And yes, sure, it's this huge game company, GW, who kind of makes a point of telling their player base to where to go if they don't like it, but, um, oh my gosh, there's so many models here. There's so many pieces here. Um, but yeah, it, it survived too. So it's not like it's beyond recovery. It's such a, it's a bit of a defeatist attitude, honestly, to say like, oh no, it's dead and nothing's going to change it. It's like, hey, there's your magnets. yep, ta-da. Oh, we've got bigger ones and littler ones. I don't know crap about magnetizing. I haven't magnetized ever. <laughs> Guess it's time to learn. I noticed the boys in blue named a warjack after one of their commanders. Wonder if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Hey, the striker I think was a great idea and it is a perfect homage because striker's story absolutely earned it. I was supposed to demo for Calopy Games, but they decided not to go this year. Oh, sorry, man. 
Oh no. Oh, sorry, no complaints here. I'm still super stoked. I think they're um, going to only look better through the years. Yeah, I mean, and there's always places to grow from, from the 3D printed models, right? Themes are gone, right? right. Yes, themes, themes are gone, kind of. Armies are themes now, if we're being honest. Like the faction now has a bunch of armies, and this is the Winter Core army, and the Storm Legion is the electrical guys portion of Signar, and the Orgoth have their Sea Raider pirate side of it. There's going to be different armies now that are essentially the theme forces. Uh, yeah, ex exactly as Victor said. As for character war jacks, unlikely all factions get three warcasters, two jacks, three solos, and five to six units. Yeah, but we all know there's inevitably going to be like, here's this little bonus thing where you get a little baggie of of additional pieces you can put on a model, maybe some gimbling or whatever to make it a character jack. And they can just direct sell that, and it's just like a little upgrade. I don't think that's going to bloat skew. Mike, I tried to rekindle it. Unfortunately, no one is willing. Well, never know. All right, I looked into all the changes. However, it's been 10 years, man. 10. Let's see. Thank you. The plug and play dynamic coming right out of the box is amazing. That part is definitely nice. So, yeah, we've got all these little bits here. So, here's our big, chunky chassis here. And again, not seeing anything in the way of mold lines, but I will let you be the judge of that. Let me get this camera closer. Oops. Sorry, I have to manually set the focus because again, webcams are awful. Also, it would help if I was hitting the right thing. Come on. Ta da. All right. So here we can see a little bit that might need to get cleaned up with like an X Acto blade. I'm assuming there is a support here. You see that? So super up close view here. Uh, another support area. I happen to have my handy dandy Wargamer utensil here. So let's see if that just cleans up all right. Scratching it now. There we go. No, this is that's not going to show up in an, under any primer. And then right there. Yeah. Gosh, that's like just coming off like butter. Honestly, like you don't even have to put uh, force into the blade at all. Just literally the weight of the blade scraping over it. Okay. What about over here? So you can definitely see where the supports are. So there's probably just going to be a little touch-ups if you want it totally perfect. But again, I mean, the the detail in the smokestacks there, all of the rivets, very clean, very, very nice. The uh, structure supports are all on areas that are flat planes that you can just scrape off. So that's cool. Uh, I guess this war jack is turning because I think his little codpiece thing is there, I don't know, I don't know what's happening. All right, so, yep, there's his hips right on that side. So he is looking to his right, clearly. But nice and clean. Um, I assume just for good measure, we'd probably go ahead and wash these models before we would assemble them and prime them. Yeah, so. Kind of with like a dish soap. Just regular dish soap, not a cascade or anything like that. Probably. And then there are the sockets for setting those magnets in. Really deep sockets. Sorry if it's a little dark there. I'm trying to get all the detail. And so that's where you can just snap on all the little arms. So speaking of, here we've got a right fist, a lovely hammer. I'm not actually sure which jack this is. I'll have to see. Let me check the comments real quick. For now, they do Victor. I'm sure as popularity increases again, they'll expand the factions. No doubt. Let's see. Gave away about 700 points worth of models for the game because it was unsellable. Kept cricks for nostalgia reasons. You know, I hear that a lot of, oh, I sold off this army, but I kept X. You know, like, uh-huh. <laughs> That's the army you should have had. Mm-hmm. That's the army you should have had. If you were collecting a bunch of other armies, 
other than just for collector reasons, maybe you were chasing a meta. Let's see. Still have a decent community in Georgia. That's good to hear. Pour one out for the intern that has to clean all the models now, right? Thank you, Todd. Agree, Christopher, I think them adding magnets to the army box was a great choice. You know, it's one of those really nice quality of life things where you're like, okay, I got this box, and now I'm assembling, especially if you're kind of newer, sort of newer to gaming. I mean, magnetizing is no joke, but at least everything's just in the kit. It's like this just nice thing that, yeah, I guess if you needed to go get magnets, that's not expensive to go get. Go look them up online or go to a local hobby shop to find them, make sure they're the right size. It literally just being in the case is just like, everyone's gonna have actually magnetized models and it's gonna be hopefully a little bit more uh, better done. I'm assuming the magnet attaches on this. Oh, wait, I'm missing, I'm missing a piece for sure. Let's see, so here we've got his little legs. It's cute little, it's cute little Kator feet. So, pretty happy there. Uh, pretty traditional Warjack, tiny feet, as you do. All right, so what have we got here? That's an ax, and that's a gun, and that's another gun, and oh gosh, there's another option here. Which side does that go on? Oh yeah, that's that lock system. I'm trying. Just trying to organize it, because there's a, a lot of it's a lot of parts. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen parts for this one more jack and minis. All right, I'm going to let the camera focus back down here so that I can not drop a bajillion pieces because that would not be pleasant. Pretty strong design decision to keep armies at that, but they did reserve the right to add more, maybe possibly. Oh, of course they're gonna add more. What many your company doesn't expand their stuff? Premium choice on privateer. Yeah, I was one of those whalers and nashers and I still am. <laughs> I can help talk you through it if you'd like. Uh, let's see, and the folks that didn't like it went to Ninth Age, WAP, or kept playing the old editions, true but it didn't stop the game from being successful. Like, obviously there's always gonna be a churn in the player base, that's fine. And I'm not really of the belief that like a game company owes anything to their, to their audience in that they need to always bend to the will. I think Mark III suffered horribly from them listening to one segment of their audience. So, you know, you've gotta keep certain artistic decisions or just certain core decisions to like the framework of the company. And then yeah, people, people come along with it. Let's see, the beauty of tabletop is that no one's gonna bust down your door and beat you up for playing how you wanna play. True fact. I think Privateer did some pretty unforgivable things, but I'm willing to give them one more chance. Unforgivable? Man, is this really unforgivable? I don't even know what that would be, but anyway. I love the built-in magnetization. I need to magnetize some AOS models and I'm borderline terrified of taking the Dremel tool to them. Yeah, that being kind of nice. Only thing I've magnetized is this corn lord of skulls, just, just to transport if needed, nice. Oh yeah, that was a good idea because he's gone and that's how they honor him or is it because they recognize all his deeds and are naming a jack after him? I mean, both, he, he basically became a saint well, yeah, exactly, which a lot of Archons were saints. Someday, I always know. So see, privateers selling baggies of parts, really leaning into the plastic crack aspect of the hobby. <laughs> yeah, they should even paint them, they should even print them blue. <laughs> anyway, <clears throat> I say that because I'm in Albuquerque and we literally just unveiled a bronze, copper, I don't know, statue of the Breaking Bad guys, uh, Walter White and Jesse Pinkman. So that now sits in our town square. Gotta use that scale, it looks cool. Let's see, Mark II started right around when GW was making some bad choices, true fact, and it boomed. Mark III started around when GW started correcting. I, I, do no I did notice that, yeah. Is GW going to repeat and drive players to War Machine again? Oh, it's possible. I don't think 
G like GW, I know people were like complaining about their recent annual report or whatever, but yeah. Great Bear, maybe this is. I actually have this, I have this stuff here. Hang on, hang on. I can, I can answer that question. Great Bear options, a battle mace, a heavy cannon, which looks like that. Is that a right arm or a left arm? I guess it's a right arm. Jesus. Uh, deep freezer. Okay. Quad chain gun. Wait a minute. I don't have that in here. Oh wait. Maybe that's it. No, no, that's not quad. That's 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 like a flamey looking thing. All right. Cannon bombard. That looks right. Ice hammer. Long axe. We are opening the dire wolf for sure. Power shield, flame fist, yeah. <laughs> and scrap job, yep, yep, yep. This, my friends, is the dire wolf for sure. If you're gonna be shaving resin like that, you should be wearing a mask. Ah, just a little bit, sorry. Your ex mill, several of us, Salty Joe. Oh, I would love to be wrong, but every community here is dead, and I played in southeast Michigan. It was very healthy at one point. There's no press gangers to prop it back up. Maybe. I mean, yeah, I mean, the people in the community do, do make it what it is. I this just... Is the press gangers in this parenthetical says the real reason game was successful. <sighs> super helpful. It is super helpful. I, uh, I mean, I'm... I don't know that I can disagree with that. I don't think it's the absolute answer, but probably healthy, helpful. Not good. I was worried for a minute they wouldn't forget to put the mold lines right down the center of the piece. What are you talking about? Mold lines are on the front, but there's no mold line down the center. There's no mold line. There's just connection points. That, let's see, what's that? Okay, that might be a mold line right here. Well, there's no mold, so it can't be a mold line. Well, I'm not entirely sure. It looks like this might be an assembled piece. Am I right? I mean, it looks like a mold line is probably a front line. Oh, maybe. All right, all right, let's check this out. I wish this camera didn't suck. All right, let's see. Back it off Try it. All right. So you see right here, that line? Well, it looks like it continues over here. I used a little exact way. Oh, that's a good point. So right along there, right along there. So that could be a line. So I feel like that definitely disappears with a um, just plain old primer coat, but you know, just for, since we're doing this for science, I'm just showing you what I see. So there is that line. I, again, don't really think it's an issue, but yeah, just in case you want to know, it's there. You use a soft toothbrush and rubbing alcohol. Oh yeah, that, that would probably work well. Press gamers are coming back. Oh, you think so? I've been looking forward to hunting great bears and dire wolves. <laughs> Soon we'll release the jackals. Let's see. A little dish soap and water will be fine to clean up. Okay, so yeah, I mean, you guys know what's going on here. We're sitting in the corner waiting for a minute to throw light. Yeah, no, that's gonna, so that's gonna be the real big thing, right? Because they're releasing the Storm Legion, the, sea, the Orgoth Sea Raiders, and the Kador Winter Core, which is just these three models so far. Um, what is that going to look like for all the other factions that are out there? And that's, that's gonna be, and I'm sure like they're working over time trying to make sure that all of those factions have some playable parts, right? So people can enjoy Mark IV and not only be limited to the unlimited arena, limited to the unlimited. That makes sense. Let me see. I don't see our number of viewers. Mm-mm. Hmm. All right. Well, let's not waste your guys' time. So again, well, I'm going to put it on here. That way you guys can kind of get a sense of all the parts. Again, 13 parts. No joke. Uh, three head options. So there's that. Um, I'm sorry, four heads. There's four heads there. Have to refocus. Yeah. All right. 
So there we have all of these little bits. So obviously the center main body, um, his little two legs, we know that those probably aren't gonna have to change out. So I can set that in there. Um, and then, yeah, the different options. So like I said, you've got the long axe option, very typical Kidoran axe. Um, you've got your ice hammer, also traditional, relatively traditional, I guess. Um, cannon, which appears to, I think it's that one, because the bombard is that thing. Yeah, that's what Black Ivan ran around with. That's what all the bomber, um, the Kador destroyers have. Um, left arm options, the plow shield. So that's certainly fun. While base to base with this model, friendly models gain resistance blast. Uh, the flame fist, which is, you know, kind of self-evident. Uh, and the scrap saw on a critical hit with this weapon during the model's combat action. Um, in which the attack, after an attack is resolved, the model can make an additional attack against the model hit. So you get like kind of a sustained attack. You just get an additional one. And then the heavy chain gun, which I'm thinking is that. No, not that. Where's the chain gun? Maybe that. No, maybe it's that one. Heavy chain gun. All right. Uh, gain plus one to attack and damage rolls with this weapon against medium-based models and plus two to attack and damage rolls against larger-based models. So you need to cure some of that Kedoran accuracy, although we are up to Rat 5 now. Woohoo! So yes, there you go. Now how do these pieces fit together, pray tell? So again, everything has this little socket it fits into. That's going to be the base positioning of our little Jack here. So he's got, he's got a little turn little pose going on and then pick your head which this will be an excellent part for magnetization so again you've got that deep socket there and on the arms on the arms to see um, so you can change out whatever you want to. Uh, and yeah we've got the little different heads here so they're all looking pretty good uh, how defined are they or different Hmm. Four different heads. Let's see, there's one that gives you overtake, one that gives you pathfinder, one that gives you shield guard, and one that gives you evasive. Pretty cool, pretty cool, pretty cool. So, I don't know. Is there anything you wanted to see on these before I moved on to what will inevitably be the great bear? Let's see, now they can re-release the Iron Fang Cal and this. There's a reason mine are still sitting half assembled after six to seven years. Dude, I never got around to assembling my iron fang. I have both a metal pack and a plastic pack and I never got around to them. Where's the goat painter? <sighs> Teaching a dance class, although she might pop by. Uh, looks like Privateer Press is using super dense resin for the prints, which is really nice. You know, given the fact that they are probably the largest miniature company, I would argue, going with the 3D print mode of delivery for models, the standard is going to be pretty high. I mean, there's already a lot of people who are like, I don't know how I feel about 3D prints, so it would behoove them to use like the best quality resin for the prints and be really conscientious about their cleanups because, you know, they're kind of having to prove a point, even though, yes, smaller miniature companies have done 3D prints and all that. Everyone's really looking at privateer and being like, what are you doing? So they are kind of gonna be the ones that are considered to set the trend if it works out. Because if it works out, you can bet a lot of people are gonna probably go that way until they realize how efficient you know, injection molding can be. Let's see. Yes, this was an impromptu stream, so. <laughs> we just got your stuff today. Yeah, no, I just got it today. Like, I was literally at work, and then you sent me a picture of it, and I'm like, can't wait to get out of here. <laughs> so I left early <laughs> and then was very excited to set up this, this stream. Got to be careful with magnets around kids and pets. Yes, magnets are horribly dangerous if you eat them, especially if you eat two of them, because you can imagine what a strong rare earth magnet might do inside of your intestines. Two pieces decide to magnetize together. 
Hope they send really strong magnets. The downside of magnetized models is that they tend to flop all over the place during the plate and they're not strong. Aha! There is a solution to that that they were advertising as well. So take a look at like this piece here. You'll notice that this is the socket where you'll put the magnet, but you'll also notice that there's like this little bit, these little extra bits that one might consider flashing, but oh, they are not. Do not shave them off. Um, because they are designed, my understanding of it, is to lock the piece, yeah. So once it sets in, those keys literally keep the model from jiggle wiggling anywhere. So you snap the piece in or you attach the piece and the magnet holds it on there and then it doesn't wiggle anywhere because it's not just a flat surface to move on itself, it's locked in with a, with a shape to keep it locked in there. So they actually solved for that. Good guy elf vampires. Kind of like Bangle and Bell Pen had steampunk babies. Oh man, I just read the, the Dusk House floor right before I came out here too. It's like, ah. And only fans for Warjack feet? Maybe. Only boots? <laughs> Let's see. Pretty strong magnets, especially with the arm locking system. Yeah, so it's Veebs was mentioning. Uh, oh god keep losing the chat. There's so much in here. Let's see, that's good. I tried magnetizing the ironclad cyclone defender once. No, magnetizing, like we magnetized um, Colossal, the uh, conquest, and that was difficult. A, a bad call. Well, it was just really challenging to, like it, it seemed like a fun idea and I'm really happy that the top cannon was magnetized because then I could point it at who I was firing at, which was just like for my own pleasure. But yeah, it's, a model, the model being designed for magnets, <laughs> super good. Let's see. But can they bring back the scar bomb? Hmm, bring the scar bomb back? I hope, I don't know. Scar was, I don't know how many of the old casters are going to come back, guys. See how many people show up to those events. I don't know. I'm assuming you're not talking about Gen Con. Let's see. I'm just going to skip ahead here. Pretty cool seeing some of the new models. Can't wait to get my battle group from Gen Con. Yeah. Let's see, a statue of fictional criminals. Let's see, wasn't a meta chaser just a big painter? Brought an army for each caster I liked. Let's see, wasn't a meta chaser just a big painter? Brought an army for each caster I liked. Had an all Jack Resnick army. Oh yeah, I bet that looked amazing. And man, bless you for painting your war machine models. Like, we needed more of you. Next time you pass it, let's see. Yeah, that model's a dire wolf. I'm desperately hoping that they make these $75 preview boxes a regular part of the range rather than a one-off thing. They desperately need to lower the entry point. Yeah, I don't know. Like, on a one-for-one -one of the model, what was it, like a little over $9 or something per, per model on the 22 model box set. This, this is 75 for the three models. But it's like the two big jacks and all these, you know, 13 parts to this, right? And there's like the cleanup and everything involved, unless they can maybe streamline that. Uh, I found a calculator online that literally compared like what and how much the dollar has inflated between like 2015 and today, and it's like 25%. <laughs> so comparing the price to what models were in 2015 is probably kind of unfair, especially lately. So I don't know if they might be future proofing a bit or, you know, as things get refined, maybe maybe the price point will change on that, but yeah, I mean, 75 for this is, it feels a little high, but I think each of these jacks are gonna be like 40 bucks a piece, so, or more, and so if that's the case, then you are technically getting a deal if like the mini itself is like 20 or, I don't actually know the price points, but you know what I mean. And it's not like people bat an eye paying $40 for a model. Let's see, I even, I haven't even played. Hmm. Quad laser, uh, Aqua Teen Hunger Force memories. <laughs> All right. Well, I think it's time to go into the next model here. I'm sorry. I'm going to have to skip ahead on the chat, so I'll have to catch up on it later. Sorry, guys. I hate to do that because I love hearing everything you have to say. I love all your opinions. Well, I like hearing all your opinions. And then arguing on the internet for hours and hours and hours. Anyway, this will be fun. It'll be fun to watch Flo learn how to magnetize my models for me. <laughs> She's so good at everything. I'll just make her do that too. So 
Philly Cater. I'm so tempted by dust. Yeah, the dust faction's kind of been very polarizing. Folks are either like all on board, yeah, yeah, vampire elves, hell yeah, or my faction is dead. Which, you know, I'm going to make sure this is all actually contained. All right, now we have the great bear, the big, chunky great bear. And what what do we have? I just pulled the base out, so don't freak out that that's missing. And yep, there's the magnets there. I'm gonna set them out. You guys know what magnets look like. Okay, okay, here we go. Oh, Jesus. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 pieces, if my rough count is accurate. So we've got another chunky boy here, beautiful. Is he? Um, let's take a look here, let's grab his legs. I think he might be a little bit more of a serious Jack. He's not posing quite as dramatically. So yeah, he's, he's literally just walking forward toward you to probably put an ax in your face. I feel like, I feel like the great bear is what like Beast 09 really is the like the equivalent of. So those fit in there fine. Um, not seeing a print line or anything here. Again, detail looking sweet. A little bit of cleanup right there. By the way, Minoff John is on. <gasps> hi, what buddy? No, Minoff John. Oh, hi. Hey, John, how are you doing? Well, I'm enjoying my new cater figures. Are you a Gen Con? Who's a Gen Con? See, inflation, $1 in 2015 was one twelve in January 21, and one twenty in January, yeah, there you go. <laughs> ah. Showed the weapon flexing earlier. Uh, yeah, so, and I did it on literally the smallest model, like none of these are flexing for anything, but I don't think that they're going, I'm not inclined to give them a drop test, <laughs> admittedly, because I'm like, I just want to play with my toys. But yeah, the uh, E Katarina had a little bit of flex in like the weapons, and I, I demonstrated that earlier, so it's there. Let's see, not likely to podcast regularly. I just remain busy at work as ever. Oh my gosh, I know. I feel like that's only ever gotten worse in the last couple years too. Like I'm constantly, constantly away from my home. My favorite part of 3D printing, this is always satisfying. They do look beautiful. Greetings from Mexico, hello. Let's see. Greetings from New Mexico. Greetings from New Mexico. <laughs> hello, neighbor. <laughs> um, let's see, will they all be dead elves or now is the old faction still gonna exist outside the unlimited play? Also, yay, cater every day of my life. Well, Murphy, so the sundering is what happened within the borders of Ios, which I'm not really sure why it would maintain within the borders of Ios, but whatever. So the final Iosian gods were, alas, Murdered. And Gershield was wrong, because <laughs> it didn't save the elves. The, the Sundering basically ripped the souls out of all the elves that were still in Ios. They either died or became eldritches. Yeah, like liches. And I guess it didn't affect the ones outside of Ios for reasons unknown, because I don't know why a literal border of a country would make a difference, but it did. So that's how you can reasonably still have your old retribution you models. <sighs> you can either reasonably play your old elves that way, assuming they just were not in Ios at the time of the Sundering. Otherwise, yep, you have vampire elves now. I'm awesome. Well, good to hear it, John. Let's see, so will the Gargan douche or whatever his name is lead the lead the undead elves. Uh, well, it's certainly not going to be Gershield. That boy's gone. Real talk, is the quad chain gun two or four? Because I can't wrap my head around the quad being two. Uh, I mean, yeah, yeah, that's fair. Let's see what we've got. Heavy cannon, deep freeze, quad chain gun. Well, it's gonna be one of these. So we've got two. Oh, wait a minute. Are there nope. two chain gun arms? Because if there's two chain gun arms, that could be quad. No, there's not. Ah, sorry, I'm losing, losing my head. 
Uh, there's whatever that is. Oh my gosh, there's so many weapons here. All right, let's see if we can just identify these. So body, we know what that looks like, and we know what the legs look like. Cool. Here are the heads. Uh, granted abilities, aggressive and heavy boiler, uh, reposition two, stammer, uh, you get follow up and grand slam, and then magic static on one of the heads. Spells cast by enemy models within 10 inches of this model suffer plus one cost and minus three range. Neat. All right, let's see here. So that is a right arm, right arm, lefty, right arm. Ah! Don't mind me. Just uh, dropping stuff as I do. This is, this is why plastics are good for people like me who drop everything all the time. All right. Yes, all right, so left and right. Yes, we do have a shield cannon, which you should recognize from ye olde man of war. Um, so I'm assuming that's what it actually says here. Decrease your quad train gun, battle mace, cannon shield, yeah. It's a machine of war. L-O-C-L? Not really sure how that works. But anyway, yes, range six cannon. Okay, so there's that. Uh, then, of course, we've got a blasting fist. Okay, so there's... There's the fist, looking like a little chain dilly there. That's critical knockdown. Uh, then we've got the battle axe, which we're all familiar with. A battle axe has critical amputation, quite nice. Uh, dozer, okay, so that's what this is. Dozer has beat back. So then on this side, battle mace, which just take a minute to appreciate. This type of thing, does not get made in a traditional mold. Like that is 100% like some of the strength of 3D printing right there. Like look inside. I'm gonna I'm gonna jack with the camera again. Sorry. Cause look at this. This is just this is this is actually pretty incredible. There's a triangle like Kador. Exactly. In the Kador and Anvil. Hey, Ta-da! But I mean, that's pretty awesome. Like you can get some really, really beautiful detail there. So, just saying. Let that auto back. All right, uh, what else? So we've got this beautiful battle mace with beat back and critical smite. And then we've got heavy cannon, which is one of these, deep freezer, and the quad chain gun. So the chonky thing, I think that's the deep freezer? Yeah, it looks Technical. It does look like, you know, it could, it has maybe some refrigerant within it. <laughs> I don't know. I hope, so maybe when you buy the actual models, it comes with instructions and you're not left to your own devices like me. But, uh, okay, yeah, that, let's, let's call that the deep freezer for now. So that leaves us with these two guns, which are either the quad chain gun or the heavy cannon. So heavy cannon, I'm inclined to believe, with this type of uh, barrel, probably heavy cannon. So yep, here we are, the quad chain gun that has two different barrels, each possessing six shots uh, on the rotation, and then two of these. So why is it quad? I don't know. Aldridge are energy vampires. Well, apparently they, they feed off of the solace and all of that. Let's see, are they mixing it into War Machine Mark IV then? Mixing what? <laughs> Just post glue it. Might sag, but that's gravity. Huh. And Miranda, how much cleanup on those models? I mean, I haven't touched any of them. This is a straight unboxing from the package. Um, I scraped a couple of them and, and then the chat, you know, kindly reminded me that I can just use like dish soap or some alcohol on a toothbrush to clean up any of these bits. I mean, to touch it, I don't really feel anything. I think on a prime, a prime coat, you're really just, you're hardly going to see anything if you do nothing to the model out the gate. And if you do kind of scrub it, which you should clean your resin models anyway. Um, no, these are going to be really clean. These are, these are beautiful. And no, there's no print lines that I've been able to see. Done several close-ups, so you know, be your own judge of that. Uh, and then if you are attending Gen Con, I'm sure they have the models out and you can, you know, give them that little test, stare, stare at them. 
Two chain guns shooting two shots. That'd be quad. Yes, that's true. I guess I should probably read the instructions. L O C R. I don't. Rate of fire 2D3. 2D3. So maximum of what? Six shots? Average of three? Also not quad. <laughs> but that's fine. <laughs> Up to six shots. Minimum of four, though. Minimum of two, I'm sorry. Yeah, you could roll two ones. You could just do what I do all the time. Oh God. Anyway, seems like there's a lot more crit effects. Yeah, and I'm assuming the crit, which I liked. I always liked the way criticals were handled in War Machine. Let's see, to glue resin, just rough the surface before applying super glue. Listen to Mike, he knows what he's talking about. Not the model or the rules, okay. Uh, yes, but Warlocks and War Beasts still use the same general rules. Are they hollow or solid? These guys are solid. There might, if there's an infill, I don't know, they, they have a weight, they feel weighty enough that I think they're solid. But with a 3D print, I don't know how that works with the resin if you have an infill the way you do with a filament. So, in the motherland, quad, two to six. <laughs> That's right. Wargamer girl, wait a minute. They're inspired models. Now I'm chain gun confused. <laughs> Let's see, it could be a Dunia thing instead of fen blades or a hybrid of them, yeah. Yeah, they're solid. Beeps, okay, thank you. Uh, somewhere the confusion feels on theme. So yeah, I don't know, that's, that's the models there. And I was thinking about maybe starting to assemble them, but it did occur to me I should definitely wash them first. Again, here's a view of like the little magnets that come with the pieces, uh, all of the areas that, oh, there's a magnet in there. All of the pieces that are interchangeable have sockets for magnets that just come in the box. And these models, at least the ones they sent me, look really damn clean. So now the only thing, I mean, really the only question is like, you know, if people are willing to make the investment. You do get a lot for it. And there's obviously a lot of labor that went into making sure the models you get are basically ready to go out of the box. I mean, Depending on the player, they're definitely ready to go on the box. But, you know, to get to the prep for painting is really simple. Some basic cleanup with a toothbrush, maybe some alcohol on some of the parts. But again, like that feels smooth right there. Like it looks like there's a mark, but it doesn't. I mean. Hey, John. All right. Well, have a great night. Thanks for popping by. Super appreciate you saying hello. Do tend to like their models. They've upped their model game a lot in the last six years. I still remember the new Bloody Barnabas. Like, oh my gosh, that model just captured my imagination. It's one of my favorites. So yeah. Whew. Seriously, so dang hyped. I love it. Let's all be hyped. See, with the new models, you need to drill out to fit the magnets, or is that space accounted for? No, the space for the magnet is designed in the model. So. Um, yeah, as I was pointing out, like on here, it's a little more obvious on the dire wolf because he has bigger, chunkier shoulder pads. So let me just see if I can't commingle all these. Okay. PP says our 3D printed models do not need to be washed before. Oh, okay. Well, they don't need to be. That goes against my own personal habits, but they're probably right. I mean, that means that they washed them for you, most likely. So. There is some labor kind of taken away. And we all know how much time can go into miniatures, so every little bit kind of helps. But yeah, all of these are socketed um, so that you set the magnet in there, that the magnets that come with the models, and then you can just change them out as you like. And as was mentioned earlier, and it probably bears repeating, is that all of these extra pieces that, I'm sorry, all of the weapon options and pieces that do go into the weapon socket or the arm sockets and such have this like keying business get that uh, on there so it keeps it from moving around so it just sits in the one position so you also don't get like wiggly arm syndrome so yes quite impressed oh i'm glad you guys are enjoying it let's see travis has a video up of him shaking the heck out of the new models and showing how good the magnets are oh excellent there you go, you're already seeing, it's like people are already like on board to test all of this. So, you know, let's, let's see how, how this performs. Uh, yeah, they have to be washed with alcohol for, before, before curing. Okay, might still wash them out of habit slash superstition. I know, right? 
All right, well, that's, that's kind of neat. I think that's basically covering, unless there's something else you want to see. The, um, I'm excited to get these guys put together, see what the magnetization process is like, get in a Mark IV game, and uh, yeah, see how it goes. Let's see. That keying is such a good idea, right? Now, like, the magnets being in the box, one of those things you could go do, but nice quality of life thing, the keying, like, you can tell there was problem solving that went into the approach. Like, well, we know people want to magnetize their models. We know people want to get the most out of what they're spending on a model. So a Warjack that has, like, half a dozen configuration, or, you know, several different configurations, it, makes a lot of sense and so in order to let the player be able to have all of those options they actually are encouraging you to magnetize like that that seems really positive to me thank you guys i appreciate y'all joining the stream um yeah so i would just say uh, fair fair warning this retail box for the Kadoran winter core does run you 75 bucks uh, and then when the Storm Legion and the Orgoth Sea Raiders comes out, those are all priced at $199. Currently available at Gen Con, which I'm not at, but that's okay. I have a little piece of it right here. I'm fine with that. Andrew Fairbanks is asking if you got any infantry. Nope, no infantry with this. The Kador Winter Core literally is two jacks with all of those options. And then uh, the new Ekaterina, uh, not Sorsha, <laughs> Ekaterina Warcaster. So three models, and then the jacks have whatever, but it's still three models at the end of the day. So that's what comes in that core. I have no idea what comes in the whatever would be the rest of the winter core set. Um, I think there was some mention that the way these are being sold was going to be limited because there would be some overlap with the full 50-point box sets that are going to be coming out. And so the one after that would presumably be a $200 box set with everything else. So no infantry for me yet. This is great, thank you. Thank you for all taking the time to pop in here. I'm very excited because now I can get these assembled and start working on them. Let's see, yes, please double, triple check polarity of the magnets um, and dry fit things before gluing in those in place. Yes. Don't dry fit. Don't dry, well, that's true. So if you watch uh, Nick, Karalzu, Travis, who was a press ganger, but you know, he's super in with privateer. He's got a great Twitch channel. I can send you a link to it. Um, but he actually did a whole Twitch stream of assembling the models, and he had this cool tool that was basically a rod, metal rod. Just a bunch of magnets stacked. Wasn't it just? Oh, it yeah, was just he his was technique. Since you oh, together, that's so smart. In mind. Yeah, so to help keep the polarity in mind, exactly. Like you know that the polarity stays consistent the, the whole way through. And so he would just attach one kind of like this and then break off the magnet and then from the other end, attach it to the connecting piece so that he knew they would always work. When dry fitting. But yeah, when he was dry fitting, it ended up getting stuck. So be careful with that. <laughs> Let's see, they have Orgoth and Signar sets for 75. Oh, okay, there you go. To be honest, 75 is actually very good considering you get all these options. I think if you're willing to just get in and People can be so particular about how much money they want to spend on miniatures, but I mean, the, the range is so wide varying that it's just going to be, if you want it, you're going to get it. And that's that. That's, that's the hobby, man. Let's see. I love the fact that they give magnets to the box. I know. That seems to be like a super, I feel like it just makes people so happy. Like, oh, thank you for saving me that headache. Magic trick for magnets. Plastic bags are super resistant to super glue. Use them between the magnets and the SITU. Okay, well, that's an interesting idea. Stack method is super legit. Uh, when I magnetize, I use a Sharpie and put a plus minus. Oh, I love all these techniques. Really interested in starting my War Machine journey. Well, I'm excited to see more people joining the War Machine Brigade, and I'm excited to get some games in, so. All right, I think I'm gonna go ahead and end it here. I've already been chatting way too long, but yes, do definitely check it out. I know that all of these are available on the Privateer store now. Obviously, if you're at Gen Con, you can get them there too. And I guess there's the $75 version of the Orgoth and um, Signar stuff that um, someone pointed out, so thank you. <laughs>
Thank you, creepy lobster. On that note, have a great night, guys. We'll see you uh, next week, another live stream. Bye.